It's time for the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Gridiron Show. Gridiron Revival Coaches Brought Show. Brought to you by the Belmont Inn, Panther Square Burgers and Wings, Irene's of Due West, Grits and Groceries, and Sports Break. Now, 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 here's your host, Benji Greeson, and the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Chap Boyd. And good Tuesday evening to all of you. It is the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM. And we're streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I am Benji Greeson here with the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Mr. Shap Boyd. Coach Boyd, a, uh, a little different mood than uh, the last uh, coaches show we did last week as the Flying Fleet go down to, uh, to Jacksonville and uh, – Boy, just a heartbreaking loss there. Uh, Twenty-one to twenty, uh, I, Coach. I, I think I would rather lose by a hundred. <laughs> you know, I used to say that a lot, um, but I, I, I really don't. I, I really would not. I, I really would not have wanted to be beat by a hundred. Right. Um, you know, ultimately it was it was, it was definitely tough in, in, in the way it happened. But I also think that I think our kids can take something away from it because I think they understand that probably our our focus and and um, how we approached last week maybe wasn't what it needed to be and I think that um, just the fact that it was so close it's a little more painful almost I mean if you got beat by 100 at some point yeah yeah you're down so much on the sideline that you're not even it, it, it's over you're not even thinking about it right that was you were thinking about it every second. It was just—it yeah. was like pulling out your fingernails or something. It yeah. was just—it was just—it was a—it was a painful deal, and uh, and I think it was painful for our players, and and that was good. It was good to see that. Um, so anyway, success is a terrible teacher, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, There's you no know, doubt, you, you yeah. learn a lot in losses, and you learn a lot about yourself as well. But really, a tale of two halves in this game. Uh, Flying Fleet, uh, first of all, you, you had to feel pretty good about yourself right off the jump as the uh, you had a uh, Corey Massey with the scoop and score there, the first, uh, uh, first points in the game uh, for the Fleet that night. Your defense has scored in both games so far this year. That's, that's got to be a, that's a positive. Well, that's – I mean, I, I tell them weekly, that's an expectation. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm used to having defenses where we score. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's not something that we take lightly. Um, the expectation is that we will score, and, and we expect to score. So um, I think I think they're starting to to, to, to get it. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, uh, Forty-one minutes and twenty-three seconds versus eighteen minutes and forty-seven seconds. That was the uh, that was the difference in the time of possession <laughs> there, and uh, and most of that was was in the second half. Uh, you're leading twenty to seven right there at the half, and then. It just seemed like a slow chip, and and honestly, it looks like they just defense kind of ran out of gas there uh, uh, toward the end of the game, and um, uh, that quarterback could pick him up and put him down too. He could cover a lot of ground really quick. We we did, but you know, a lot of times um, your energy level and things like that are dependent upon you know your mood. Yeah. So when your mood is better you tend to have more energy. Right. And when your mood is down, you tend to have less energy. And and essentially, you know, the thing, the way I kind of explain it to our team is, you know, we were kind of waiting for that thing to happen in the second half right. to pick us up, and it just didn't happen. Yeah, needed that and, momentum um, swing. Yeah. And, 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 you know, in the first half, we, they were, we were able to get those things. In the second half, not so much. And it just it just it became a steady decline as as the, and, and at some point we were out of gas, and um, you know. But all in all, it, it still could have been a win. We just you know we 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 didn't need to give up the touchdowns. We did. We we could have done probably a little bit better. You know, I think there were some there were two calls that I thought were you know very much questionable. The interference calls were not interference calls. The one led to that touchdown at the very end of the first half. Right. And that was a, um, that was that 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 would have been a different game if you go in up twenty nothing versus twenty six, right? Because the momentum had kind of started to shift at that point, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so that was something that because uh, I really thought we had them kind of bottled up. It was third down and seventeen, and they get they call interference on that thing, so um, that kind of let them put the ball in a position to to stick it in the end zone, and uh, 
you know, and again, it, it, we shouldn't have let it, let it to happen. We did, you know, so we got to be better. Closing the book, moving on, right? I know uh, losses sting, and, and you learn from it. Uh, you, you learn from the, the, the film that you watch and the different situations and scenarios that uh, that you put in right there. But a lot of positives come out of this game as well. Uh, um, Jay Bellamy, Seneca McKee, both uh, uh, pull down touchdown passes again in this game. Uh, you finally getting uh, – you can trust those guys out there, it seems like now. Yeah, we – that's that 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 hasn't been an issue. I mean, ultimately, they've been pretty consistent players um, in practice, and, and and we expect that they continue that on on Saturdays. So, um, you know, and they and that's what they do. I mean, that's what we do. So they're going to have to. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the reality. Uh, if they if they come up short, then guess what? You know, our team's probably going to come up short. So. Yeah. Uh, quarterback Craig Pender had another good game there. Uh, Two hundred and sixty-one yards through the air. Uh, three touchdowns. This is uh, multiple games back to back with multiple touchdowns. Obviously, something you can grow on. Yes, there's no doubt. I mean, there, there's there's certainly things you can take away positives. You know, ultimately, bottom line is just you know, if you're going to have the ball that little time, then we have to be able to get mm -hmm. produce points. Right. Um, either that, or we got to keep the ball a lot longer and not let them score points. So, I mean, either way, we have to – and then we have to do a better job at times too. So, ultimately, it's a um, a give and take. But offensively, we we definitely have, have weapons. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I look forward to watching them grow and develop. And uh, um, I think schematically there, there's some good stuff there. And uh, it's going to be problematic, I think, for some of the folks that we potentially are going to be playing. So Outstanding. All right, uh, moving on from last week's game, Coach, uh, we have uh, the home opener, the first home game for a Nurskin football team in 71 years coming up this Saturday, J.W. Babb Stadium on the campus of Greenwood High School. And uh, we're actually going to be talking to uh, Greenwood Athletic Director uh, Sparky Hudson coming up here in just a little while. And uh, that relationship with Greenwood High has just been outstanding so far, has it not? They, they've been awesome. They've been awesome, and they have a, a, such a nice facility that, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to um, uh, checking it out. I mean, it, it, and, and the fact that we're going to be playing our first home game in 70 years is is just, I mean, and, and, and to have and be able to play it and be blessed to be able to play it in a facility like that. Uh, just can't can't say enough about the people down there at Greenwood and, uh, and uh, everybody that's making this thing possible. So uh, I, I know that uh, season tickets uh, have been sold. Single game tickets are available right now. Go to erskine.edu and uh, you can find tickets for the game. There are still some uh, Erskine tickets. ErskineSports.com, yeah. I think. Ers and, uh, ErskineSports.com. Um, and uh, tickets are available. Parking passes are available. From what I understand, tickets are, are, are selling good. So there's going to be a nice crowd there. I think the big thing people need to realize is with this COVID stuff, everything's online. So you really – the expectation of rolling up there and buying tickets at the gate isn't going to be as easy as what maybe you could have done in the past. It's going to be right. much easier for you to go online, buy it online, buy the parking pass that goes with it, and 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 whatever. And then you're going to have your QR code or whatever that whatever you're going to have on your phone that you show them when you get there. Right. That's going to be a lot better, a lot easier process than when you get there. Yeah. Uh, and I would, from my understanding, if you if you do try to buy tickets at the gate, you're going to have to have a phone that can scan a QR code, correct, to buy the tickets electronically, yeah. and that's going to be the case all season, yeah, and, flip, and probably from now your on. Your flip phone may not work. I don't know. <laughs> your <laughs> rotary <laughs> phone probably not going to hack it. So you you may need to make sure you've got some modern technology <laughs> if you're planning on. Scanning at the game. So, so uh, no Motorola razors are going to no, cut Those were great phones, by the way. <laughs> they were, were they not? <laughs> uh, hey, if uh, you'd like to call in and uh, chat with us here tonight, you can do that by calling 262-864-0929. That's 262-864-0929. We'll uh, have open phone calls here uh, for the next few minutes before we take a break. And uh, we're going to be joined by offensive line coach Drew Engel. Also, uh, Athletic Director Sparky Hudson from Greenwood High is uh, going to be joining us here tonight as well. And, uh, of course, we'll be ending up the show with a, uh, a preview of the game coming up uh, Saturday against uh, Shorter. Going to be a good game. Yeah, Shorter out of uh, Rome. They're out of Rome, Georgia, and they're out of, out of the Gulf South Conference. And uh, it's a, that's a – I mean, 
the way I look at it, it's kind of the SEC of Division Two. I mean, they've okay. got some, some good football programs in that league, and they've got teams in that league every year that are in the in contention for the for the national championship. It just, I mean, so does the SAC, which is the league that's more more closely related around here. Um, you know, they've had the Lenore Rhines and 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 and, Pro, and Wingates, people like that, that have been top notch programs as well. So, um, you know, we're you know, fortunate to be uh, able to play some of these folks and, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing what our kids can will we'll do. I mean, the film we have on them, they play lined up against Kennesaw State. So, you know, <laughs> and they, they held their own against Kennesaw State. They didn't exactly get run out of the gym. So, um, you know, if, if they're at looking at our film from Edward Waters, it won't look like the Kennesaw State film. So, yeah. But, uh well, uh, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be great atmosphere, and the weather is going to be absolutely well, it's gonna perfect. Well, it's going to be nice. It was not nice in Jacksonville last week. It was a mud bog out yeah. there. At least it looked like it on uh, on yeah. the stream there. Yeah, it was uh, it was raining off and on pretty much the whole game. So. Yeah, we should have uh, uh, as of right now seventy seven in sunshine. You can't hardly uh, can't hardly beat that for an opening hard. day. Nope. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, we are going to jump out and take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, uh, open phone lines with more of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM. It's game time, Fleet fans. And when you come to town on game day, Fleet fans stay at the historic Belmont Inn. The newly renovated 117-year-old Belmont Inn radiates with the class and charm of centuries past while providing her guests with all the modern amenities. Call 864-459-9625. That's 864-459-9625 and ask for the Erskine football rate. The Belmont Inn, on the square, downtown Abbeville. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive lineman. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. JP's Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And JP's always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This is JP's Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries, 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! Panther Square, Wings, Burgers, and Beer. 101 Court Square, downtown Abbey Village. Your destination for great food and good times. Check out their brand new menu with all items $10 and under. That includes fries and a drink. This spring, the patio is open with all of your favorite games on multiple TVs. Panther Square has great appetizers, 30 flavors of wings, and the coldest adult beverages in town. You've always got home-filled advantage at Panther Square Wings, Burgers, and Beer.
And welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I'm Benji Greeson, and uh, joined with me now is the uh, offensive line coach for the Flying Fleet, Drew Ingles. Drew, welcome. Hey, thanks, Benji. Appreciate Absol- you having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You uh, let's uh, let's get to know you a little bit here. Uh, you are originally from where? Grew up in Michigan. Michigan. So, originally from Michigan. All absolutely. right. You a Big Ten football guy? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Uh, you were a uh, uh, Michigan, Michigan State guy. Who, who were you pulling for when you were uh, a kid? Grew up, up there? Michigan. Okay. Definitely. So you hate Ohio State. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> which is fun, which is cool. That's yeah. good. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, man. That's really cool. So, uh, uh, and you knew you wanted to get into coaching uh, when? Early uh, age? Yeah, early age, I'd say around uh, high school. Yeah. Um, just a lot of the coaches I was around had a huge impact on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only in football, but in the rest of your life as well, uh, you know, even down to your faith. Um, and so that was something I always wanted. I always thought I was going to be a teacher and a coach. And uh, I got my uh, undergrad is in special education, so I actually ended up teaching for two years, special ed, and then... Where'd you go? Uh, went to a small Christian school up in Michigan called Hope College. So okay. I right there in Lake Michigan and um, did that, played there, ended up teaching special ed for two years, and from there, I uh, got into coaching, so... So uh, you uh, you went basically right out of uh, right out of school there, right? Yes, absolutely. So went uh, right out of school, got was teaching, got into coaching. Soon, my I haven't missed the football season. So I've yeah. been playing or co- coaching since about fourth grade. So. Oh, that's that's great, man. Mm-hmm. That's great. Uh, so you are the uh, offensive line coach uh, here. What's uh, What's something you look for in an offensive lineman when you're uh, when you're out on the road recruiting? What's uh, what's a quality that really kind of jumps out at you that you that you know you want to bring these guys to uh, Erskine? Looking for guys who who finish blocks and guys who have an attitude when they're blocking. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's always measurables: how tall are they, how big are they, those kind of things. And we always want athletic guys. Uh, but the number one thing we look for is, is an attitude and guys finishing on offensive linemen, guys who finish blocks, uh, guys who are aggressive. Uh, that's what we're looking for, guys who are just tough. Right, yeah. You know, it all, of course you know, but it all begins there on the uh, on the offensive line. Absolutely. And, uh, and there's, a, uh, there's almost a, uh, a fraternity of offensive linemen, you know. These, we're, we're a close-knit bunch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. None, of the, none of the limelight and all the dirty work. Yeah, all and, the dirt, but we appreciate the dirty work. Exactly, so. exactly. That's what they kind of thrive for. Mm-hmm. And, uh uh, in an offense uh, that Erskine runs, which is breakneck pace, uh, yes. a lot of times, um, the linemen have to be uh, they have to be conditioned uh, differently nowadays. I yes. would think, especially in this sort of wide open, fast paced offense, as compared to years past when you line up in the eye and just you know smash straight ahead, right? Yeah, no, we 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 get on the ball, we snap the football, and uh, our guys have to be get set right away. And, yeah, there's not a lot of time spent in between snaps. So they <laughs> yeah. have to be in shape. Uh, getting them in shape is one of our priorities. And that's, you know, we want to snap the football. We want to put the pressure on the defense. So You're also the, uh, is it run game coordinator? Yes. Yeah. What does that entail? I hear a lot of colleges do with that now. They have a passing game coordinator, a run game coordinator. And, I mean, obviously the offensive coordinator kind of oversees Correct. all of that. But uh, what, what are your duties as a run game coordinator? Uh, as a run game coordinator, uh, basically – organize the run game so the running plays mm-hmm. um and just trying to find the best looks uh and working with coach hayes in that um so we can work together and he can focus sometimes more on the passing game and i can take the run game uh and come together and and how do we merge those two together uh to fit what what he wants to do overall within the offense what we want to do so right. um it, just helping him with that so he can f- just folk where the focus is mm-hmm. so that we can divide it up a little bit more and, and um, you know, just work together to get our team and our players in the best possible situations uh, to be successful. So. What kind of uh, what kind of film study do you guys have to put in? I mean, you you do a lot of digging in the film and all that. Or? Uh, we do, yeah. we do absolutely. We spend a lot of time in the film. So that's uh, is, is it all on iPads now, <laughs> or are you sitting there with the TV and, and all that? How are you, how do you guys break it? it depends down? where if we're in the office, you know, we're on the TV on the computer linked to the TV, and you know, yeah. if you're at home, you're probably on the on the computer, and, and all the way down to you know, if you don't have that, then you're on your, on your phone. So, and you're yeah. watching it on your phone. So, wherever you can, um, you know, any any way we can get an advantage or 
um, you know, see a weakness in the defense or something that's going to help us help our guys be in a successful position. Right, right. You uh, also uh, being a coach, uh, you you have to wear a lot of hats, uh, obviously, and uh, you also are, are a big part of the. Uh, you know the recruiting process. What uh, what area are, are you assigned to uh, to recruit? Yeah, I've got um, uh, basically from Florence to Myrtle Beach, okay. up that way. So, PD region. Yeah, I, I guess. I've got the PD, and uh, so I've been there in South Carolina, and then out of state. Uh, I'm down in the uh, Savannah area, Georgia, kind of right up through there. Uh, right up to Augusta. It's not a bad yeah. gig. You got a lot of coastal no. area there. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, Take a little I, stop off at the beach. I, I do enjoy the beach. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, I was down in Florida coaching down there the last five years. I had the Gulf Coast of Florida the last five years. Oh, okay. And, and I, I've been all over in Florida. But, uh, you know, I, I, I do enjoy the beach. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was planned that way, but I wasn't <laughs> complaining about it. So, um, being the offensive line coach, you're not just recruiting offensive linemen, right? No. I mean, it's, it's, you know, whoever's in that area I mean, that you think. Whoever's in your area, you know, I double as a recruiting coordinator here as well. So, yeah, um, yeah you're touching every area, every position. So, yeah. at that point, it, it's finding guys who, finding, you know, the right fit for our university, the right fit for our program, what we need position-wise, athletically, um, and then, you know, as well as do they fit the uni- do they fit the college. So, you know, and, and do they fit with our, our faith you know, our faith-based um, education here. And right. So just you, it touches – I touch a lot of different places in the program. So I would imagine finding – and, I mean, you guys have a full team. I mean, we're talking 100-plus, right. you know, kids on campus right now. But you would think that finding that fit and finding somebody that uh, kind of checks all those boxes, it's not necessarily an easy task. Um, it's not – I wouldn't say it's necessarily – it's not easy, but I wouldn't say it's that difficult either. Now, there's a lot of work that goes into it, um, but luckily for us, Erskine College is a great place. Uh, we've got a great education to offer here. Uh, there's, it's a small, tight-knit community. We have a gorgeous campus. Beautiful campus. Absolutely, and we do offer that Christian education. Which yeah. There are a lot of kids who want that and need that right. uh, in their life. So we're fortunate to have that. We're fortunate to have a lot of things that uh, make our place, uh, you know, a, a a great place to be that people will want to be at. So, right. and then you, and then you add in the football on top of that. So, and coach Boyd, what he's done, uh, you know, in terms of in defenses and what he's known for just being aggressive and physical, uh, in our offense, which is up tempo. So there's a lot of good yeah. reasons to come to Erskine and, you know, it has been, we might have to cast a little bit larger net sometimes. Um, but we've got a lot of guys who are, who are good recruiters, and we get, feel we have a great product to sell. So people are excited about it. I know we're only two games in, but there is a lot of excitement. Mm-hmm. There's a buzz around town, you know, uh, about this team. And this week is a huge week there on campus, too. Fleet week coming up. Right. And uh, you, know, you guys are going to have a big parade and all that Friday, bonfire, the whole nine. Absolutely. And there's a lot of uh, – A lot of good reasons to come out. Right, a lot of good reasons to come out. There's going to be uh, – a lot of stuff going on. Uh, do, you, do you get nervous now before games? I know this first home game here, there's been so much anticipation and build up for it. Do, do you personally get nervous for it? Uh, I don't think I get nervous. I think you, you have a little bit of feeling. It might be more excitement than anything nowadays. Right. Uh, you know, maybe when I was playing, it was a little bit more nervous. But, uh, you know, game days, I look forward to game days. There's, there's a little bit of excitement because you're, you're going to have to make some adjustments and how are your kids going to handle it. Um, but, you know, our kids have been doing an awesome job so far. And, um, you know, we just want to put them in a great position where they can go play hard and be tough and be physical and enjoy playing the game of football. So, right. Um, you know, there might be, I don't know if it's necessarily nerves, uh, maybe just a little bit of excitement, maybe more for them. Um, and, you know, we, you want to obviously play well and, and have your guys execute. Uh, but uh, I don't know, if, uh, probably more excitement than nervous. And it's not an eight-hour ride home. <laughs> no, that, that's even better. Absolutely. That's so, the best part. So uh, some t- uh, eight hours is probably a little long. Sometimes, you know, a little little ride home after a big win, that's not the worst thing in the world. Right, Those right. Are kinda, you know, might want to take the long way then, but eight yeah. hours is, is long enough. So I've talked to, uh, you know, interviewed a lot of coaches, and uh, some are, are very superstitious, some are not superstitious at all. Do you have a game day routine? Not necessarily a superstition, but a, a routine that you do that you go through every week. Not, uh, not really. It depends. It depends how much time we have before. Um, I don't. Sometimes I like to I like to get a run in before, uh, but yeah, obviously it depends on the weather and yeah, you know how I'm feeling, I guess. But sometimes I might get a run in before. Uh, otherwise, I'm 
really don't have many superstitions. That, like I said, I'm not lining up at right guard to play. Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, so I don't yeah. have to worry so much about that. Yeah. Uh, I do, in different situations, maybe like I uh, like to give some uh, structure to our kids, maybe get them going a little bit early. You know, sometimes with this old line, we got a younger group, like to get them together, get them a little focused more than you would sometimes with an older yeah. group. So uh, we might do some things before we ever get to the stadium. Um, but uh, for myself, not really. So. Speaking of a younger group, uh, I counted on the uh, on the roster there. I think eighty three freshmen or red shirt freshmen. Yeah, I know this is a startup program, but still, that's that's unheard of. I yes. mean, you you are literally molding uh, these guys into be college football players, the, the whole team all at once, right. which is that's not a common thing. No, it's not a common thing. Um, some people might you know find that a little difficult. There's just a lot of youth, uh, but I also think it's an awesome challenge, and, and what a great uh, time you actually get to mold the whole football team and, and what coach Boyd has done here has been awesome so far and yeah. he's, he's laid a great blueprint for what we're doing um, and just being aggressive and physical and, and being a blue collar football team so uh, you know some people there are some I'm not saying it's all, all great they obviously you know being coming more consistent uh, just developing those fundamentals those de those daily habits in order to, need to be successful yeah. uh, you know with young players it probably takes a little longer. You don't have that senior you can depend on, and they can just learn from who's going to run it. But right. with that, I think there's some awesome challenges and awesome opportunities to really watch your kids grow and develop. And if that's what we're in this for, it, what a great time to watch your kids develop and grow. And, and not in just football, but in their academics and in their faith uh, right. and everything. So, Can you imagine what this team's going to look like in three years? Oh, If the yes. court – I mean, I'm saying if the, I know there's attrition and, right. you know, things that happen, you know, in the college game, the transfer portal and all that stuff. Right. But in three years, you could have a senior-laden roster that has been in the program, taught by you guys, coached. But they know the uh, the culture. They know what Correct. to be, what's expected of them. Right. And they're they're not bad now. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yeah. right. No, we, we've got work to do. Uh, but they are. We've got really good kids here. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're they're good people. They want to work hard. They're they're. They are working hard at trying to develop those techniques and fundamentals and daily habits to be successful, and they're growing. And we've seen, even in the last two weeks, we've seen a ton of growth. So, uh, yeah, three years from now, you know, there's a lot of potential to be, uh, you know, be very successful. But you got to just, you know, we can't look at that potential now. we got to look at what's, you know, we're, we're on what's the next step. That's so building that's, blocks that's, to that's, get to that point. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Offensive line coach, uh, run game coordinator, recruiting coordinator, uh, Coach Drew Ingles here on with us tonight. Coach, I really appreciate the time, man, and uh, best of luck coming up Saturday. I know it's an exciting time. First home game in 71 years for a uh, for an Erskine football team and uh, uh, the shorter uh, give me a give me a quick little uh, scout report on their uh, well I guess you're kind of studying their defensive line their right. defensive habits there what do you what do you see out of this shorter uh, team uh, I think they're you know they're a well coached football team I think they're going to be excited to come in here and play uh, they you know they're a golf south team which you know golf south has some very good football players and if they've got a uh, their linebacker was the golf south freshman defense player of the year, year uh, yeah. last year so he he runs around very well gotta they've get got a hat some, on him yeah absolutely they got some <laughs> bigger guys up front um you know it's going to be a good challenge for us uh you know i think more things that we have to worry about is just uh executing on our end mm -hmm. uh you know just getting our pads low up front and, and moving the pile a little bit so uh, you know, they, they do some nice things. They, they aren't overly complicated, uh, but they line up and play. So, yeah. um, we'll see. We've there got, you go. we got to get our guys going. So. That's it. Best of luck to you, man. It's always Absolutely. a pleasure and uh, good seeing you tonight. Man. Absolutely. All right, we'll jump out take a quick break right here on the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. We are live from J.P.'s Food and Spirits on the ground floor here at the Belmont Inn. We will be right back. It's game time, Fleet fans, and when you come to town on game day, Fleet fans stay at the historic Belmont Inn. The newly renovated 117-year-old Belmont Inn radiates with the class and charm of centuries past while providing her guests with all the modern amenities. Call 864-459-9625. That's 864-459-9625 and ask for the Erskine football rate. The Belmont Inn, on the square, downtown Abbeville. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive lineman. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. Panther Square Wings, Burgers, and Beer. 101 Court Square, downtown Abbey Village. Your destination for great food and good times. Check out their brand new menu with all items $10 and under. That includes fries and a drink. This spring, the patio is open with all of your favorite games on multiple TVs. Panther Square has great appetizers, 30 flavors of wings, and the coldest adult beverages in town. You've always got home field advantage at Panther Square Wings, Burgers, and Beer. JP's Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And JP's always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This is JP's Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries, 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! Welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I'm Benji Greason, and I'm here with Athletic Director from Greenwood High School, Mr. Sparky Hudson. Thanks for joining us tonight, man. I appreciate that, Benji. It's, um, it's exciting. Oh, well, getting ready uh, as the days get closer for Saturday. I know uh, it's going to be a, uh, a great day. Uh, so many Erskine folks out we're getting into some other stuff, I'm sure. But I, I was in, the, in a parking lot of a gas station yesterday, and some folks I knew very well. He uh, he said, Coach, I've been meaning to see you. He said, my, my dad played on the last Erskine football team. And, oh, wow. And, and so I, I got him hooked up with uh, with, with Beth. And uh, so there's just a lot of people excited about it. They are. They're really excited. And uh, uh, season ticket sales are going well. Single game ticket sales are going well. And uh, first of all, just an unbelievably beautiful facility there. J.W. Babb Stadium is the creme de la creme of uh, high school stadiums, especially in this area. So uh, kudos to the, I mean, it goes all the way up, I would guess, to the superintendent, the board, uh, the school board there, uh, and, the, and the Greenwood community as a whole coming together and putting a facility together like this for, for people to enjoy. You're right, Benji. We are very blessed. It's, um, uh, you know, it starts with the press box there that um, that was built. The Taj. Yeah, the, you know, the Taj. <laughs> just, uh, everybody gets that. But, you know, and we've, and we've begun to – and we've begun to – um, reach out and try to do other things to other facilities on our own, and, we're, and we've got some plans in the works for some other things. But you know, we we are very we are very blessed. To, just that we were just talking about today our SRO, and we just start talking about you talking about the things that would it would take to build that. I mean, you're just talking in the you know multiple multi -mil multiple millions of dollars. Right. And so uh, try to check. You know, and, well, you know, that's exactly <laughs> uh, SRO uh, AD, AD we'll, we'll we'll fund it for yeah, them. There you go. But it's uh, it is this um it's nice and in, in our um uh, our our district has done a great job. It was um in place before the administration is in there now, but they're they're very much on board with uh making sure we uh we keep those things going and you know it's just um we are blessed and we tell people all the time you know we we need to understand how 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 blessed we are 
It's uh, it's a, it's a, like I said again, a beautiful facility. There's not, uh, they didn't leave a stone unturned uh, as far as uh, uh, the functionality of it, uh, the the look of it. I mean, the whole thing, the the, the press box, the stadium, the whole nine. Again, kudos to uh, to all involved. How how old? When was that press box built there? When, when was the um the uh, the press box was? Oh, I'm gonna make sure I'm right here. No, oh, it was um. 10, okay. 2010, 2011, um, is uh, Coach Cathcart, Coach Gene Cathcart was there. Right. Uh, I, excuse me, I back up to, to nine because uh, it was in the process of being built and he left um, a few days later after winning the state championship, but it was uh, um, yeah, 09 is what I'm, I'm pretty sure is correct. Right, right. Uh, what a wonderful marriage it's been already with yes. uh, Erskine College and uh, and the Greenwood High. And uh, I know that for the next foreseeable future, the Erskine home games will be held there. And uh, that's got to be a uh, – uh, I know it's probably a lot, little more work on your end, but it's got to be a fun experience now bringing the college game into JW Bab. It is. I, um, we've had several conversations with people like, it's got to be neat, you know, to have the college experience. And it is. And, and you, know, uh, I, I, you know, a special shout-out to – uh, to Beth and, and Chat Boyd, they've been they've been excellent to work with, and you know it's so funny. I've I've been uh, been in meetings with with all of them for um, a good while now, and because as athletic director, about the district, they said, "Hey, you handle it." And, you know, there there's yeah. other things to handle, but they've asked me to do it because I'm the facilitator there. But but it's not been a it's one of those things where it's not been a labor. Uh, it's been it's been they have been great to work with. They're uh, Mark Peeler uh, yeah. as well, and Drew Wallace, and and so just all the people you start ticking them off, and uh, I tell people all the time, it's you know, Coach Boyd I can sit and talk ball with, Beth I can talk about my kids with, and then of course <laughs> Randy from Aramark comes every day and we start talking about food. So yeah. you know, it's like, hey, we're we're the whole we're, gang's we're, here, the whole gang's here. So, <laughs> but you know, they they are, um, you know, we tried to be very. Um, uh, you open our doors, yeah. And but they haven't, you know, they also haven't been demanding. And and, and I know people say, well, gosh, what is that? But you know, some people, even even when you open open your doors, you feel like, well, like, are they trying to take advantage of us? They're not. They they just want to they want to have a great experience, and, and we're able to, um, you know, we're able to to have them in in all the places where it be uh, you know, officials or visiting team. Their team, uh, the alumni, the the uh, president's box, and so yeah. we, all those things have kind of have really fell into place. And uh, and again, of course, you guys will be uh, doing the uh, doing the broadcast there. And we and again, we do have going back to that. We do have the uh, the great facilities to do that. Absolutely, and, uh, uh, for home and and away radio, if uh, if it comes to that and down the line. But. Um, yeah, like I said, they those guys have been a a joy to work with. And you, know, you just when you even though, like you said, it's a lot of work. You, you'll get a phone. You'll get a phone call. You get text. You're thinking, "Whew! All right, um, let me think about this." But then you know, when we respond back and forth, and like I said, I know they're nervous because of Saturday coming. And yeah, you, yeah I talked to Drew, Drew Wallace. He said, "You know, we've been working on this thing for a year." He said, "But I just feel like <laughs> he said I feel like uh, I'm not really prepared." Yeah. But they are. They they worked and to prepare. But you're never prepared enough until it happens. And 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 there'll be some there'll be some things that people and people will probably never see it. There'll probably be some stumbles and they'll probably go well i need to do a little bit better but you know i think that uh uh when saturday comes people are going to be are going to be really uh, really pleased with the product this one on the field because coach them have done a good job there but also what they're what they're trying to um the the experience they're trying to give their fans right and there is a fan game day experience is going to be happening there and you know uh there there are certain parking lots like the white lot the gold lot the garnet lot the you know where people can come and tailgate and there's a the whole uh the swag shop inside and the concession i mean the whole nine this is going to be I mean, this is a college football game in a I mean, let's be honest, in a facility that's better than a lot of small college facilities. Well, they've done a good, uh, you know, again, Beth has been, uh, you know, I think instrumental in a lot of those things. And, matter of fact, I gave her, I think I gave her a little heartburn. Uh, I don't know if she <laughs> told you uh, at the mil- early last week, we had a sinkhole Uh-oh. pop up in the uh, in the garnet lot, which is the one that's right there <laughs> next to the uh, thing. It's but only I mean, rained about 90 feet yeah, over the past it, three it, months, it, right? Exactly, but they, um, district came in. 
um, and uh, started with the with the company, and and they were they were working today um, with the blade. The guy I love watching. Uh, my kids love watching it, but I love watching people use those machines. That, I mean, just how how talented they are. The guy was oh, going yeah. across there, blading it, and, and it's and leaving it ready. It's it's. Re I think when they left today, it was going to be ready for asphalt, and uh, and they didn't start working on it until probably Wednesday of last week. So wow. they've just been warped. But you know, it's just, that's one of the things you have to get done. In. But those are little things. Those are things that come up, and yeah. you have to deal with it. But so, but I told her I took a picture yesterday and said, "Hey, I think they're going to be done before the weekend." She said, "Oh, hallelujah!" So <laughs> that, that's a good thing. I mean, you can't plan for that. No, you can't. That's exactly right. Adapt, adjust, and overcome. That's I guess. Exactly right. right. That's exactly right. Uh, here with uh, Sparky Hudson, athletic director at Greenwood High School. Of course, that's where Earth's going to be playing their home football games this season. Single season tickets are available. Go to ErskineSports.com. That is ErskineSports.com. You can pick up tickets for their game against Shorter coming up this Saturday. Uh, kickoff is at 4 o'clock. Sparky, thank you so much, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Benji, appreciate you guys having us on. And, and, and we're I'm so glad we could come over and talk a little bit about it because, again, I, I just – this is uh, this is going to be uh, a great experience, and a lot of people. Again, um, it's going to bring it's bringing back so many memories for so many people. Like yeah. I said, I met somebody in the parking lot on Monday who, who said that to me. I'm thinking, that's interesting. I never knew that, knew because I know him and know his know his dad, know his dad. And yeah, he said that he played on the last Erskine football team. So that's, that's really cool. And, and I think that's really going to going to draw. And we're looking forward, hopefully. Folks, you come out, please come out and support them. Yeah. It's going to be uh, going to be fun. A lot of room. If you you know you want to get away from people, you can. There's yeah. lots of standing room at JW right. Bab, and so we are blessed with that. So, and appreciate you guys, and, and look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. All right, man. Appreciate All you. Right. All right, we'll jump out, take a quick break. We'll be right back, and wrap up the show with Coach Boyd as we preview uh, the game against Shorter coming up this Saturday, right here on WZLA. J.P.'s Food and Spirits on the ground floor of the historic Belmont Inn is open Tuesday through Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. for your dining pleasures. Enjoy their incredible appetizers and mouth-watering entrees prepared fresh to order by the highly skilled Belmont chefs. And J.P.'s always has the perfect drink selection to quench your thirst. This is J.P.'s Food and Spirits, a proud sponsor of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Grits and Groceries is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. Go to gritsandgroceries.com to see their full menu. They're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Thursdays, they're open for supper from 5 until 9 p.m. Go to gritsandgroceries.com and you'll see their full concert and special events calendar, as well as all of their catering information. Grits and Groceries, 2440 Due West Highway in Belton. Go Fleet! Flying Fleet football players know a thing or two about Irene's of Due West. After all, it's right in the middle of campus. And if you want to find great food, just follow the offensive linemen. Irene's of Due West has the best pizza, wings, hot oven subs, seafood, pasta, and bluebell ice cream. Irene's has indoor and outdoor seating, and they're open seven days a week at 11 a.m. For takeout, call 864-379-2850. Go Fleet from Irene's of Due West. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest. For all your games and good times, it's Sports Break. It's game time, Fleet fans, and when you come to town on game day, Fleet fans stay at the historic Belmont Inn. The newly renovated 117-year-old Belmont Inn radiates with the class and charm of centuries past while providing her guests with all the modern amenities. Call 864-459-9625. That's 864-459-9625 and ask for the Erskine football rate. The Belmont Inn, on the square, downtown Abbeville. 
Panther Square, wings, burgers, and beer. 101 Court Square, downtown Abbey Village, your destination for great food and good times. Check out their brand new menu with all items $10 and under. That includes fries and a drink. This spring, the patio is open with all of your favorite games on multiple TVs. Panther Square has great appetizers, 30 flavors of wings, and the coldest adult beverages in town. You've always got home-filled advantage at Panther Square Wings, Burgers, and Beer. And welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide at WZLARadio.com. I'm Benji Greeson, back here with the head coach of the Flying Fleet, Coach Shap Boyd. Coach, uh, here we go. We're, uh, what, uh, four days away now from our uh, first uh, home game here in 71 years. Just just spoke with uh, Sparky Hudson, athletic director there at Greenwood High, and, uh, of course, he was uh, over-the-top complimentary about uh, how uh, you guys have handled everything and about the relationship between Erskine and Greenwood High right now. And, uh I know uh, you're just uh, beside yourself ready to get this home game kicked off this this week. <laughs> there's no doubt. I mean, I feel like there's all these firsts. I'll be glad we get through this fall, this <laughs> fall, get through this spring, and then we're done with the first. And yeah. Then we can get to our first fall season. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so. Uh, well, uh, you know, there's always going to be a uh, a lot of uh, firsts and a lot of uh, you know never have happened uh, type things before. So. Uh, Really looking forward to it, but uh, so the opponent on the on the docket this coming uh, Saturday is uh, Shorter University out of out of Rome, Georgia. You you touched on it uh, briefly in our first segment, but uh, in case people are just tuning in, this is a uh, this is a tough team from a tough conference. They they play in a really good conference, and uh, you know they <clears throat> they've been. I mean, they're not like at the top in the top tier of that conference, but to be in that conference and North Greenville was in that conference to be in that conference. They have to, you know, they're recruiting, they're recruiting a, a type, a certain kid that they feel like they have to have to be able to compete. And they're, they're trying to compete at the national level. Right. And that, you know, you know, knock, knock, you know, that's kind of what we're all trying to do. <laughs> right. I mean, you know what I mean? So, you know, when I'm looking to programs that I want to try and emulate and whatever else, I mean, they're a startup, I don't know how many years it's been now. It's not like it was 10 years ago. But they haven't been around that long. They've been mm -hmm. playing ball, I don't know, 20 years, something like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if they had a – like us, you know, they had it back in the day and then dropped it and then started back up. But, you know, they've had a tough road to hoe. I mean, the, the Gulf South is a, is like, like I said, it's like going to the SEC. It's a tough deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, right now we're, we're a, a, a school without a conference. I mean, we're – we thought we had a deal going, and we thought we were getting something going with the Carolina Conference, and, and maybe that happens. Um, but you know, we, we have to find somewhere to go because if you don't have an if you don't have a place to go, then getting games becomes harder. Right. And and trying to get scheduling and things like that. So at some point, that's going to be you know hopefully in the next year or two things will kind of that's settle uh, down. There. I mean, without a conference, normally you pay you would play your non conference schedule in the first half, and then your conference schedule toward the, the last half of the season. So if you're not in a conference, well, you're trying to battle the, to get games when everybody's already in conference play. And therein lies the rub because <laughs> you can't play a, a schedule in the first four weeks. Right. Because everybody else after the first four weeks, they're in their schedule. They're not, yeah. They can't play you. Yeah. You know, and uh, some of these conferences, if, if they were – Maybe a tad smarter, they'd understand that there's a lot of schools out there that maybe aren't in a conference. If they want to pick up games, they need to maybe allow a game later on in the year that isn't right. a conference game. I get you want tune-up games that don't count before you start playing the games that count. Right. I understand that. But you might want to leave a game somewhere towards the end where you could uh, pick up, you know, because that would there's a, there's a lot of teams out there that aren't in conferences or they're in conferences where they have, don't have enough teams and they got to go find outside games. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, speaking of shorter, as uh, as they come to town uh, Saturday, uh, four o'clock kickoff, and of course you can uh, hear all the action right here on WZLA, 
uh, streaming online, WZLARadio.com. And uh, Erskine will be streaming uh, ErskineSports.com. You can go and catch the stream there and watch the game uh, Saturday. But we encourage you to come out. It's going to be absolutely beautiful weather. 77 degrees, all sunshine, and there are still tickets available. So uh, go to ErskineSports.com to pick up your tickets. Uh, tailgating, a big fan uh, experience, uh, the whole nine. It's going to be a great day out there. So Shorter comes into town. I know you've been, you know, you're practicing already this week. You're looking at film and all that. What do you expect to see? And I know you're a defensive guy. What's the Shorter offense bring to the table? Uh, their offense is RPO. It's a lot like our offense. I mean, it, they're – they're trying to, to to combine the run game with the pass game. And mm-hmm. essentially, so it's a play-action type of deal where they're they're reading certain people when they mesh with the quarterback. And then based on what they're seeing, they're either coming out of that and, and, and throwing the ball or it's it's a give. So, in a sense, it's it's a it's a different take on, like, triple option and stuff like that, yeah. you know, going back in the day um, where you're, you're building in the pass into, into, into that deal. So, um, but it's very similar. Um, they're very methodical in how they go about doing it. Um, they're not fancy. They, they, they're not trying to, to run a, a bunch of different things, or at least that's you know what we've gathered so far. Right. Um, so anyway, it's it's a it's a it's a spread offense, and you know I don't know if they're we don't know you know you, you can't tell on 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 film if it's a tempo thing. Uh huh. You know, like you know when people are watching. Our film, they're not going to know if we're tempo or not. Yeah, right, right. You know, you don't know unless you're catching it live. Yeah. So that's kind of where we are with them. I mean, they might be tempo, but we're so, Lord knows we get enough tempo in practice. <laughs> you should be used. To we that, should right? be used to that a little bit. When you when you're looking at the RPO game, uh, you know, a lot of teams do that. Do you uh, defensively? Would you call it as a uh, as you would an option? Is it you know uh, uh, a gap in territory? All right, so I've got this gap. This guy has this gap. This. Uh, do you coach it the same way? You have you have to have all your gaps accounted for. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. and then the quarterback always is, and that's why you see so much the NFL having so much trouble with the quarterbacks that run. Right, because they've never had to they haven't had to worry about a quarterback running in the NFL for right. 50, 60, 70 years, and now all of a sudden you got these young hot shots coming out of college, and they are running them. Now the difference is when that hot shot gets hit in the NFL. <laughs> he may be done. I mean, <laughs> right. his, his career may be done. Yeah. You know, in college, they get hit and they get back up and they, you know, go again. So, um, but the RPO, just for people that don't know, run pass option is yeah. is the deal there. And um, it's it's a big part of what a lot of people do. Um, it's a very popular, it's, you know, it's in vogue, you know. It's, in, uh, in, it's, in, in it's, the, it's a new, it's the, not new thing, but it's the, th- it's the main thing, mm-hmm. you know, taking place. Yeah. Um, so, you, know. you don't see any teams right now lining up in the triple option. You don't see any teams no. right now lining, lining up in a wishbone or flex you know, bone and, or anything like that now, like, right? And, and teams like a Georgia Tech that used to do it, you're having trouble recruiting the, the top prospects because they don't want to go yeah. run triple option. Three so yards in a cloud of Triple option dust. doesn't get them to the NFL if that's right. what their aspirations are. Right. Alabama, places like that, the Clemsons and whatever, those places schematically are have a chance to get them to that next level. And I right. think that's part of why – Georgia Tech and some of them have gone away from that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, back in the day, Oklahoma, and Nebraska, Nebraska, and all yeah. those folks used to run the you know what out of it, right? And, and they ran it, and but no one was throwing like they're throwing now. So it's right. just everything now is is it's basketball and grass. <laughs> yeah, play in space. That's all it is, play in space, put create your, mismatches, create mismatch, and put your athletes in space. I mean, that, that, that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, just a few minutes uh, left here uh, in tonight's show. Uh, what are a couple keys to the game that you uh, that you think uh, heading into this? I mean, for me, it's all it always comes back to to being physical. If we're not physical, if we're not prepared to be physical, let me rephrase that. And when I say prepared to be physical, we have to, we got to consciously make that decision today in practice. Tomorrow in practice, the next day in practice. If right. we if we decide that we're going to be physical, and we're making fits and doing the things both offensively and defensively, if we've made that decision mentally, then we can click that thing in and, and get ready to go on Saturday. If we don't, and, and this is where I thought we struggled a little bit last week, I don't think we necessarily bought in and, and we're all on the same page with what we what we needed to do to beat that team. Because I think if we had, we certainly could have. Right. But I don't think we did, and we didn't. Mm-hmm. And and we're not at, at a point in our program at all. I mean, we're not beating anybody. I mean, we couldn't show up and beat 
air. I mean, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? We, I mean, we have to take care of business. Yeah. we got to prepare to, to play 60 minutes, and we got to prepare to, to maximum to, effort to maximum effort and get after people. So yeah. um, those are the things I think. But physically, if we can, and can do the things we need to do physically, then I think from an athletic standpoint, I think we could – we, we can be okay. Do you feel a, a mad mood at practice, a, a more focused mood coming off a one-point loss last week? You know, I thought that it was – well, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I, I think it was a better practice than what we had last Tuesday. Okay. Well, that's good. You know, I thought last Tuesday we were still – it was still Saturday. Yeah. It was still – you know, they hadn't gotten over it yet. Right. And they got to learn that it's – you know, ultimately for us – Losses hurt so much more than the wins are good. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds bad, but we don't enjoy the wins enough probably as a coach, but we definitely hang on the losses. Yeah. Um, well, let's know. turn that around this week. Shorter comes to town. 4 o'clock, J.W. Babb Stadium. 4 o'clock kickoff. Again, you can hear it right here on WZLA. Uh, 92.9 FM. We will be live with it. WZLARadio.com. You can watch it at ErskineSports.com. All the social media. I mean, there it's, it's in a million different places. And you'll be able to catch the replay on West Carolina television uh, later in that week, Monday, Monday, uh, 9 o'clock on Monday. So, um, Coach, this has been a really quick show. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, and, uh, and best of luck uh, Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank all right. you, Absolutely. All right, that's all the time we've got for today. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in every Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m., Right here, you can tune in to WZLA, and you can also catch the replay Saturdays at noon on WCTL Television Channel 20. For Coach Chad Boyd, I'm Benji Greeson, and this is the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Until next time. Tune in next week for another edition of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Coaches Show. With Benji Greeson and Coach Chap Boy. Brought to you by the Belmont Inn, Panther Square Burgers and Wings, Irene's of Due West, Grits and Groceries, and Sports Break. We'll see you next time.